Hopefully we're better at working on cars than we are flying drones. The little six cylinder's already out here. It leaked down well. It's going to be for sale. Somebody can put this to good use. But what we need to do is go motor shopping. And why don't we give them a glimpse of what's going to be going in this car? We can do that. Junk. There they are. These guys? Those guys. Ooh -wee. That is pretty. Look at that billet cartridge, wow. This is the Comp Turbo R-Line uh, 6265, stainless V-band in and out housing. And I believe it's a 106 um, backside. And there is not one, but two of them. That's all good info, but now we gotta show them what motor we're putting in it. Mm, well, we don't need a transmission attached to it, right? No, no train. Motor only. Motor only V8 section. What is that? Dry sump LS3? Dry nah. sump LS3. You probably don't have room for that with the dry sump tank. 5.7? No? You're going a little bit bigger, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, bigger, 6.2. LT4 over here, a little compound boost action. We can't fit a blower in that thing. Okay, no well, way. then what does that leave us with? LS2? Six liter? Six liter. Or LS3? Two. It's really no question there. No, no question at all. Quite possibly the greatest motor ever crafted. The most versatile, well-rounded V8 to ever be produced. The Chevrolet LS3, 6.2 liters of power. And anything else to add to that? Nope. All right, get it off the shelf then. Pretty darn clean for near a 100,000 mile motor. Getting all my tools all oily. You better clean them when you're done.
Nice shot, MJ. From downtown. Good shooting. Three points. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. That's a lifter. That is indeed a lifter. Look at that. Wow. All the bearings look good, though. No, another one right there. Very slightly started. Hmm. I mean, again, this was a 97,000 mile motor. So that's not too, too common, or too, too uncommon, excuse me. But yeah, it's got a couple of lifters that were collapsing on it. What this gives us, though, is a perfect opportunity for the one and only giveaway of this video we like trying to find some cool stuff that we can send you all if of course you're interested in some used cool stuff you have to go down in the comment section and say i want the shaft in order to be considered for receiving the camshaft stock ls3 from this motor now is the perfect time to talk about today's video sponsor raycon Raycon earbuds provide premium audio at the perfect price point, so you can get the sound you're looking for without breaking the bank. Yes, Raycon start at half the price of other premium audio brands. Not only that, but you can click the link down in the description below or go to buyraycon.com slash scrap life to get yourself an extra 15% off on your purchase. You already know one of the ways that I like to use my Raycons, and that's working on one of the many race cars that we have here around the shop. The noise isolation and awareness modes are perfect for working around the shop. Awareness mode lets me listen to my favorite music or podcast while still being aware of my surroundings. Or with a quick three second hold of the right headphone, I can easily tune out the haters in noise isolation mode. These everyday earbuds are also water and sweat resistant. So no matter how crazy my workouts get, I know I'll have crystal clear audio the entire time. Don't just take my word for it. Raycon has over 50,000 five-star reviews. So if you're ready to buy something small that has a big impact, then click the link down in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash scrap life and get yourself an additional 15% off on your purchase. You need to use a straw and put it on the end of an air nozzle and get all the way to the bottom of the threads for the head bolts to blow out any coolant on the bottom. Perfect example right there. And the reason that you do that is if you just blow from the top down, you can still trap the coolant that is in there at the bottom. And if you torque a head stud on top of it, then it's very, very possible with the heating and cooling of the block that you can crack the block because the head stud will trap that fluid at the bottom and it will not allow it to expand and it won't be torqued properly also. So very, very important you do this on LS motors. We already went through, we scraped the old head gasket material off. You want to use a design scraper, don't use a screwdriver, anything along those lines. Get this as clean and smooth as possible. No, you cannot take sandpaper to it. It has to remain as flat and unmodified, but as clean as you can possibly get it. And then Alex is going to get started on the valve springs over here for the heads. So we can go ahead and reinstall them ready to go. Get started, bro. Yes, sir. All right, so to do the valve springs here, we're going to use the comp cam valve spring tool, which you'll use the rock lower rocker plate first because this has a beveled edge that sits inside of it you'll take the plate which has a little bevel in it set it on top of the springs take the bolt that comes with it that's got the beveled edge on the bottom and compress the valve springs it's very possible that the valve will push down out of it if you're doing these off the car like we are so all you have to do is take a mallet tip the head up and you can just tap it from the bottom and it'll clear it all out give the valve some taps It'll blow the keepers out the bottom. Loosen your tool back up, remove valve springs, pull the old valve seat out. So we are using a Brian Tooley Racing valve spring retainer kit, as well as valve seals, titanium retainers with dual beehive springs. 
they'll give you these washers that go in place of the bottom of the valve seal. You put those on, two valve seals, slide it on the end of the valve, slide it down till it stops, give it a couple extra little hits, make sure they're fully seated on there, grab a combo of your valve springs, slide them over, Make sure your keepers are sitting nicely in their grooves on the valve. And move on to the next one. So unfortunately, one common problem with the LS valve seals, they do make tools to install them, but it is possible doing it the way we're doing it and using the tools that you can rip them. They basically hammer in place, and you can see that one has some rips on the bottom and unfortunately it was literally the last one that was being installed so we're going to continue making as much progress as we can but we are going to have to hit up btr and get another seal kit so for the camshaft we called the guys at race proven motorsports to do a custom grind turbo spec for us fran has set this thing up 230 235 with a 115 lsa with a nice amount of lift, 629 is no joke, but that's what you want for the boost package. I do believe, I'm sure there are people watching that know a little bit more about it, but you want a good amount of lift and a little bit less duration than a NA cam usually has. But man, look at that thing. Whoo, that is pretty. putting the motor in time. You have the dowel right there on the camshaft, and then you have that little dimple that is on the crankshaft, and they should be pointing directly at each other. Brand new timing stuff. So quick correction, I was misremembering that the timing mark that is on the crank here does not line up with this dowel on the cam. It actually lines up with that mark on the timing gear itself, which puts the dowel on the cam at right about three o'clock, not six o'clock. So very, very important to make sure that the motor is in time, that the mark is actually on the timing gear itself. Quick correction. So torque spec on the cam bolts is 26 foot-pounds. It has been a couple days, and in the meantime, we have accumulated yet another Porsche in the shop here and while that's giving them trouble this valve seal is taken care of and we are ready to go ahead and install the heads not in the mood for youtube all right get the camera out of my face <laughs> yeah well you are working on a pretty serious piece of junk while we're putting together the piece of junk that's going to beat the crap out of your piece of junk hey we, we these can be this, not gonna happen see this is turbo problems that's why you just get yourself a nice rear wheel drive little guy you don't need this all-wheel drive front diff bull. I don't think the diff is the problem. I think it's the gas tank. It's the tech. Oh. No, wait, you're working on it. No, I'm helping. Why don't you take out the battery tray? Yeah, I'm uh, about to now. Oh, I thought we had done that yeah. first. It's like three bolts. Oh, shut the four, shut It's up. four bolts. All right, time to get back to work on this thing. Before we install the head studs, we have to go ahead and drop the lifters into position. You saw earlier in the video, we have had these soaking for a few days now in oil. And why you do that is because they are a hydraulic lifter. They are going to pump up with oil when the motor is running. So you fill them with oil or let them soak in oil before you install them. So that way they get as much oil inside of them as possible. So on that first start, they pump up right away.
It'll go beep, 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 and then once you hit 55, it goes. Oh, uh, okay. Like it, it like walks you up to it. What, what does it do at 55? <laughs> okay. That's a pretty precision, you know, 45 degree angle right there. Yeah, it's for the uh, AC lines. Free handing it with the Sawzall. Using some CAD, some cardboard aided design. Nothing wrong with that. Turtle and your Holy, holy crap. You cut that much of it out? <laughs> Good thing it's not a turbo, huh? You might Seriously. feel bad. I, I, I'm not gonna say I feel bad, but feel bad. I would partially feel bad cutting up like a nice turbo. Oh, to do this. Why don't we just cut that one up real quick, just for the fun of it? Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of cutout. Yeah, a lot of room. Yeah, and it's still not enough. <laughs> really? Turn her all the way up. Now it's time for the actual fun to begin. Josh finished modifying the chassis. If there are any Porsche lovers out there that disdain the V8 being put in it, I'm sure you definitely dislike seeing this cut out of the back end. Alex picked up the CPE mount kit for the LS swap, and we'll show you here in a minute why this had to be cut out, and then also where the support in the back end of the car is gonna be coming from. As for this,
So this clutch setup is extremely unique. It comes from spec. It has a flywheel like I personally have never seen before. And that's just to make up the difference for the bell housing of the Porsche transmission. It's just a pretty hefty single disc, which is good to hold. How much? Mm, should hold like eight, 850. Which is what this car is gonna make? Yeah. All right, well, we're gonna be putting it to the test then, spec. So yes. hopefully this thing holds up. And just in case we still have any of those Porsche purists, let's go ahead and show them that alignment tool from a Ford. So we have a Chevy motor spec clutch with a Ford alignment tool going in a Porsche. All right, nothing hitting yet? Nope. Everything looks good. All right, slowly, slowly. Uh, it looks good, though. Watch the coil packs on the side. Yep, something, uh, shifter cables up there. This is all going to that side. Let me set that there. Yeah, it's kind of tight at the top there, isn't it? Yeah, with the coal packs right here. If we have to, we'll take a coal pack off, but I think it'll go past it. All right. Keep her going. We're looking a-okay. What do we have to hook up first? Uh, we'll have to probably do the trans bolts. There's four bolts that hold the trans brace. We'll probably have to do that to support the back of the motor um, because when we put the plates in, we're probably gonna have to like move the car up and down a little bit to make everything line up. All right, so we put the two pieces of the motor plate together. This is the piece that slips down straight. This is the motor plate. So we are gonna fish this in here and see how close we are. Dang. All right. Start one or two and try the other side. We do none. So it bolts to the head there, like normal motor plate type design. And then that's actually like a biscuit on that side. Yeah, so it's a, uh, this is actually the bottom. So there's a big biscuit here with a plate that bolts. This biscuit goes on the bottom side. The big biscuit's still sitting right there. And this bolt drops in through here. And then this big washer goes on the bottom and you tighten the two together and kind of sandwich it in between this plate. That is a design that I don't think that I have ever seen before. So, looks like the motor needs to go up. The back of the motor needs to go up. Which means the car needs to come down. Yeah. Or does the motor need to come down? Hang on, hang on. Uh, yeah, because that's like all the way up. Yeah, motor needs to come down. Motor which needs means to come down, which means the car, car needs, needs to go, to go up. up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Raise the car a little bit. Yep. One more. All right. 
Okay, hold there for a sec. It's better in here than a Porsche motor. And you can see as I was talking earlier, that rear crossbar that was removed. Essentially the motor is now that rear crossbar where the connection at the back of the chassis is through these motor plates to the motor and then the motor itself is giving the rear of this chassis rigidity now. So there's one one key piece still missing from this, right? Isn't there a, a cross member piece that goes between the sub front or the suspension corners? This beauty. Beautiful billet. All right, get it up there. Let's see. All right. Wait, are you really going to do that? What? You really going to put the bolt in from that yeah, side? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to pay attention. Let me learn. So I think I might have misspoke and there's one other key piece that we're missing here. I'll be right back. Whether you like the LS swaps or not, it is pretty cool to actually see one of these in a chassis in person. Gives you a first hand look at just the completely different dimensions of the boxer style six cylinder and this just relatively small overall dimensionally v8 and those are the sections that had to get cut out you can see that the tensioner the belt tensioner the main drive system is what interferes with that but look at all of this space out to the side because you don't have that horizontally opposed six cylinder in there that's what you were thinking that's exactly what i was thinking intercoolers are going to go here much like the factory turbos so I'm thinking that he's probably going to do something along the lines of this in which the compressor will face forward, the exhaust will shoot directly back, I'm guessing the turbo will be somewhere about here, and then this compressor outlet will go directly to the intercooler, that will be very easy. Rotate that exhaust housing and almost do like a ram horn style manifold. The good part is, because we got these oilless turbos from Comp, it can go as low as he wants it to and not have to worry about gravity draining or a scavenge pump. So he can put this thing in any which direction, any level, whatever he wants to do. You can see up above the turbos there, the bongs on the coolant lines, which are going to feed and return the turbos. So, I mean, I think we have it all pretty well rough figured out, but it's gonna take a, a certain someone to make it all happen.